Good morning, good morning, family and friends. Uh, haven't been with you for a moment, for a minute uh, there on uh, on YouTube, but uh, um, this morning I just just couldn't help myself. I was uh, just revisiting uh, the back of uh, the bulletin. Um, uh, uh, Carolyn in McDonald, she just does a magnificent job selecting things that will inspire us and and uh, that we can use in our quiet time uh, during the week. And uh, this one this morning just was just blessing me. And I just felt that I just had, uh, you know, to, to pass it on, to pass the blessing on. And um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's entitled Breakfast on, on the Beach with Jesus. <clears throat> John chapter 21 and verse 12. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. It had been a tough morning to be sure. Following Jesus' death, several disciples returned to their regularly scheduled programming. They got up early, took their fishing nets, and all night long, nothing. Not a bite. Not a nibble. <laughs> Until some guy stood on the shore and called out a weird suggestion to throw their nets in from the other side of the boat. I wonder if any of them grumbled briefly. Well, what difference does it make which side of the boat we throw the nets from? Who is this guy? But by then, they were desperate enough to try anything. You ever been there before? I have. Suddenly, when their nets were heavy, the same question, who is this guy, took on a different meaning because now they knew the answer. John shouted, it is the Lord. And Peter could not get to Jesus fast enough. Other than suggesting that they come, that they add some of the fresh catch to his spread, Jesus' sole response was, come and get it, y'all. Come and eat breakfast. Now, wait just a minute. When read in context, the scripture notes that this is Jesus' third post-resurrection appearance. A miracle unto itself. After all, these men saw him perish on the cross. They saw the soldier pierce him in the side and out come blood and water. After all, these men were there. And not only that, He's preparing a meal on the beach, not as a ghost or spirit or, or apparition, but as a physical being able to lift things and build a fire like this one. Then after their own efforts had been useless, he provides an abundance of fish with one simple instruction. And after these marvels, he simply says, come and eat breakfast. Yes, after all night toiling and catching nothing and who knows what they were thinking about all night long. 
we create so much unnecessary hoopla in our own regularly scheduled programming. We plan, we implement, and we work hard and get frustrated when nothing comes of it or it doesn't happen the way we want it to happen or think it should happen or when it should happen. Desperate and empty, we finally look to Yeshua, to Jesus, as a last resort. Because, like the disciples, we don't recognize who he is, the provider, the sustainer, the bread, Sometimes, really, all he's asking is that we come join him and take part in what he's prepared and created. And he says the rest will come. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, things that we are so restless about, the things that we're so anxious about, the things that keep us fishing all night long and coming up with nothing. The rest will come. So declutter your mind of plans and schedules and to-do lists. Instead, look out upon the waves if you are somewhere where you can. Wiggle your toes in the sand. Absorb the sights, the smells, and sounds. And enjoy the moment for what it is. Maybe it's walking through the woods, sitting by a creek, Maybe it's just a quiet place. In a little part or a little space in your room. But wherever it is, if he's there with you, it's a special place. Enjoy the moment for what it is. Not what it means, not what lies ahead, not how you arrived here. Because here for you might be a very hard place, a very fearful place, a very uncomfortable place. So it doesn't matter how you arrived here. Don't think so much about that. There will be another time for that. For now, just be present with him. After all, in the best relationships, sometimes words are just so unnecessary. So, Let's just find some time, some space, some place. And do what Jesus taught us by example to do. The Bible says he often would resort to lonely places, places where he could just be with the Father, with him. God loves you. God is so good. God wants what's best for you. God is always at work on your behalf. And my friends and fellow travelers to the grave, and those who are looking for his soon appearing, may God bless you. Maranatha.